we went away on holiday and um, I just so happened to like miscarriage just while we were out walking and so I knew something was wrong. It made it a little bit harder because I didn't have anyone around. I am grateful that I had Bashy already. He was just running around like laughing at me. He, la he literally laughed at me when I was sitting there crying one day. And the growing I've done since I've stopped playing netball has been like incredible for my life. TV fam, I'm Penny Moisea, and today we're talking to former silver bird, queen of the no look pass, lip sync star, <laughs> and all round funny guy, Catherine Tumaiti, about uh, motherhood, being a qualified wag, and her return to professional sport. So, Kat, I was working out that I've probably known you for about 15 years now from back, because uh, probably most people won't know, but I was. I met you through um, your older sister Celia, who was yeah. one of my best friends until she abandoned us and we <laughs> live on the Gold She left all of us named, that's right, I'm still not over it. We can backstab her though, do you want to do that? We can just... <laughs> the last time we had a proper catch up was when we went, when we were in Tonga, which was mm. maybe four years ago. You know, the fresh crew making me get on two different boats on two different days. Yeah. You're all dickheads. Um, so what have you been up to since then? Oh man. Uh, well, I can walk properly now. So that's a good sign. Because when we were in Tonga, I had just done my ACL, like literally the day before. Um, so I managed to get my knee back. I played a bit of netball in Australia. I moved to Scotland to play netball. I stopped playing netball because I got pregnant the first time. And then I had another one. So that's two kids since then, Nings. And now I'm back trying to get my geriatric legs back on the netball court. So yeah, quite a few things have happened but in four years. Man, that's crazy. So I'm living in Italy, trying to play netball again. Two kids running around, one of them's running around, the other one can't move very much. Um, yeah, I, I squeezed quite a lot in four years, to be honest, actually, you, saying it out loud. Yeah, you did. So what was it like transitioning out of being a professional athlete at the time and then to becoming a mum? I think it's, it's not, um, I don't think, I don't see it a lot. Like, I don't see it spoken about a lot, but it was really, really hard. It kind of, it got a little bit easier because I got, you get so busy, you know, kids just don't let you do anything, like anything. And so, it, it, very busy, but I, I went from, my day was just all about me. Um, I would train, I would eat, I would train again, I would eat, I would sleep. And so, it was all about me. And it just, it just, it just felt like it changed overnight. So it was actually quite, like, it, it, I got a bit dark about it for a little while because my life had changed so quickly. Even though I didn't get pregnant by accident, like me and my husband were, were actively trying and like we wanted to do it, but we were just leaving it, just leaving it and letting it happen. So it still gave me a bit of a fright. Um, my days looked very different, my weeks, my months, and I just felt like, um, I felt like I, while I would like to have a little bit of a gap in between to know what it was like to be just a human, like, so athlete to mum, I just wanted that little time in the middle to see what it was like to be just a normal person who didn't have to go to the gym or didn't have to answer to people or to fill forms out and do all that stuff. Um, it would have been nice, but I obviously don't regret it. I love my boys a lot and they've taught me a lot about um, being a real grown-up, it's a bit different. So yeah, it's hard, man. Far out, it's hard, and I just, I'm just lucky I got uh, a pretty good husband here because it's only been us two. So, yeah, um, and with it being just you two, like, how's that 
been because I know you're like real close to your family and um, mm. sisters and Celia, even though she abandoned us. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with her. Next. <laughs> Luckily, I got five sisters I can pick who I like on different days. Um, yeah, uh, I think being away from everyone has has kind of been really good for our marriage um, because what people might not know is we spent like i think uh, maybe like eight years like doing um long distance so at least when i'm here i can only pop over to you and it doesn't feel so lonely god that sounded sad eh? so when i got pregnant it was like I just moved in and we had to learn how to live with each other, even though we had lived with each other before. But it was this was full time. So when we had lived together, I was going to training, he was going to training, we'd just come back at night, you know? But I, I was always here, pregnant and sick. And so when he came home, he caught my attitude because I was lonely, I had no one to talk. So he he's kind of caught a lot of it. So I do appreciate that. but. Yeah, just learning how to live together, I think, was quite important for us because we didn't have our family support system. The two VITs are pretty, pretty um, tight as well and pretty big, but we're isolated over here, so we lean a lot on each other and um, it's we communicate quite well when when we need to, which is good because there's no one else to communicate with. The babies don't talk back to us, mate. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> nah, it's all good. Yeah, it's a challenge, but um, we've been challenging ourselves and each other for years now, so it's just another one. Yeah, yeah. And because um, you had Bash in New Zealand, and yes. then you made it back, like, was it days or weeks before COVID hit? Yeah, it was. I think it was a month before it started, like, coming out on the news. Um, so... Yeah, we kind of just got back to Italy and then Italy shut down because, you know, as you know, Italy was the worst hit place initially. Um, um, so it was a bit scary, especially having a newborn baby and I'm a new mum. And so, you know, germs and like all like a bit scary, but we were isolated. We we're stuck in the house. We couldn't really go anywhere, do anything. We could barely go out on the street. So, um, yeah, so I learning how to be a mum on my own and literally inside the house and not going anywhere um, had its challenges but it made me learn on my own so we caught the worst of it but you know I, I saw a bit of the I guess the backlash of being locked down in my baby um, so when we did go outside he would get he would it was summer so it was quite nice outside so when we were allowed to go out he would just flip out and get excited like he's never seen trees before and so it made me feel a bit funny especially you know what we're like at home it's like get outside and don't come back until the sun's gone <laughs> so yeah it was it was rough but like everyone else in the world we just had to adapt yeah because Italy was like the worst hit at the time um mm. like for the world eh, with um because I think they were the ones who were recording thousands of deaths daily and all that kind of stuff that um did that affect you guys in any way like did it freak you out or like did you ever feel unsafe or yeah like really scary like really unsafe um should we go home like we were just like I'm not sure but then we didn't want to touch an airport so we we're like I think it might be safe if we just stay here so yeah it was terrifying man they were like like 20,000 deaths a day it, it was really scary and the stuff we were seeing on the media um, you know it's it hard to see I got to a point where um, I didn't want to see it I just felt like if we were doing our part and staying home washing everything before we eat it um, you know like all of that stuff then we'll hopefully dodge a lot of it but yeah we were trying to stay a bit naive about it on purpose because it was frightening because we were alone and people were dying all over the place so yeah it was pretty scary i mean once you got out of lockdown and you guys were able to go on holiday um how was that um being able to get out of being confined to the house and stuff yeah it was it was pretty like we just felt like 
actual tourists. Like it was so nice to just be out on the street, to be honest, like to go out and walk and get fresh air. I think that was something that, you know, like I had spent so many years like training and like doing all the stuff I didn't want to do, but I had to do to stay injury free that once it just got taken from me, I was like, man, I wish I could go outside and like run or like do all these things I've been complaining about for 15 years. Um, so it was it was like, it was like brand new, but it was more important for us to get our baby outside and breathing some fresh air because being locked in the house, I think like he just wasn't stimulated at all. So that was very cool. And we just, we only got to travel quite locally. So yeah, go to the beaches and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I remember, um, I, I think I, you had told me about it, um, but when you had gone on one of the, on one of your holidays, um, mm. you had to deal with a miscarriage after yeah. um, that. Um, how, how was that with you being away from home and then um, having to deal with that as a family as well? Um, I think, going through that is I've learned now that it's happened to me because it's just like I didn't have kids for years so when my sisters would talk about their children and doing these things I was like yeah yeah, that's cute or they would want to go shopping for kids things I'm like no no way in hell I'm going in there I don't have any kids I'm not looking at so I didn't know um so it's not until you become a part of some of these clubs you know like my acl club i didn't know how hard that would be until it happened to me i didn't want to do those baby things because i didn't have any babies and then when i did lose a baby i realized that like it's a club you don't want to be a part of but it's very common and it's very um it's a little bit isolating because you just don't know if it was something that you did but when we did go away on holiday, it, it sucked because we weren't actually in our house either. We went away on holiday and um, I just so happened to like miscarriage just while we were out walking. And so I knew something was wrong. So try to go to A&E and get everything, like find out what was happening. And it was it was quite traumatic the way that it happened. I, I think it would have been, it obviously would have been hard if I was here at home, at our home. Um, because then I could freak out and just like let it all go but I actually like I didn't cry I just I needed to be seen and I like I kind of pulled in some of my netball kind of stealth like just like nah I need to see somebody like you you're not going to see me cry I just like I just there was a strength I had to hold on to because I didn't want to freak out and I think that's what made it even harder is that it didn't hit me till a little bit later so it, it was rough and then once we did get home back here in Parma, just not having my sisters and stuff, I think that like, they made it a little bit harder because I didn't have anyone around and my husband was trying to be as nice as he can. And um, we've grown a lot so that we can use each other when things get hard or when we feel like um, you know, this is too much. One of us wants to go home. We both want to go home. The world is closed. <laughs> They've shut the doors to anywhere. So, like, there are so many things that happen, but that one particular thing, I think, is something that's really pulled us in and made us um, very strong. We've had to do life apart, and now we've had to do life together, but away from our families. So anything that happens, it is just us. So that was a really big one for me and us to get through. We lost our baby and then got pregnant not long after. So that was pretty cool. That was scary um, because of what we'd just been through and not knowing what was going to happen after that. Um, I think that was frightening, but yeah, we're all good. He, He came and saved us, little Leo. Yeah, going to uh, say Bashy from laughing at me because <laughs> I'm not going to be disrespected. <laughs> I think it's been um, so good that you've been able to talk about it because there's so many women um, and Pacifica women who go through it but it's kind of like um, maybe it's because probably people don't know how to deal with it but a lot of people don't know what 
um, what to say or how like how to say it and talk about yeah. it. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, oh, it's, it's real cool that you've been able to um, like shine some light on it. Man, it, it, it is like the hardest part is to talk about it, to say it out loud. Um, it, it does feel like you've done something wrong, even though you know you haven't, and it's just a part of nature and it was never meant to be and stuff like that. But just raising awareness, I think, is important to know because, like, like I said, I didn't know or I never paid attention, just you know, to to what that could mean for a woman or how hard that it like you obviously feel it when you hear but man it's it's different and so yeah just to talk about it and just to make sure people have a space where they feel comfortable like oh actually that did happen to me and I got so many messages about that like even women that had had miscarriages like 30 years ago they're like it's okay it never leaves you like just reminding you like it happens yeah and it's okay yeah yeah because I lost um my my older son before Jaira. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean... How old were you then? I was like 21. I just turned 21. Yeah. yeah. So, and it was it was real hard and it was like um, probably the deepest pain I've ever felt, mm. you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, yeah, so when Jaira came along, it was like he, he brought the joy back in my life. I always tell him, I yeah, brought the joy back in my it. life. Yeah. <laughs> No, oh, that's cool. <laughs> um, so, what have been the what have been the joys for you for be, of being a mum? Um, I think, like, so I giggle at myself and who I've become as a mum because I've left it so long intentionally to have kids. I've just turned into this like, like, psycho. My phone, I have like twenty five thousand photos. I don't even have a photo of Jim and I. They're just all of the children. And it'll be like blocks of like 20 photos of Bashy like eating a piece of bread. The bread starts here and it finishes in his mouth. 20 foot, like, like I just, I laugh at who I've become because like they are my world and they are exactly who we were waiting for. Um, Jim and I have been together a really long time and we've made conscious decisions to pursue our careers before we have children. And I, I find that because we have done what we needed to do, like our kids, are, like we're just crazy parents. Like Jim always just grabs the kids and he'll just like hold one up to me to be like, look, look at what we did. <laughs> we do that all the time to each other. So I think that's what I love is, who I've become, it softened me a little bit, but made me like ultra crazy at other things. Um, but I, I've, I've always wanted to be a mum. Like I've wanted kids longer than like, I could remember. So now it's finally here and they're pretty cool. They're pretty cool. Sassy a little bit, but I mean, I was always gonna have a sassy child. Is it good? I really like my kids and then I really want to smash their heads together. That's what motherhood is like. And then they have a dad who just needs a jumping sidekick to the face. Ugh. I'm all alone here. That's sausage cheese in this house. <laughs> and so, and now you get back into sports. Um, how are you going to do it? How is it? How right. is that going to work for you? I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. This is one of those things where, um, much like with my knee, I, I just thought, okay, maybe this is a sign. I got to get out. Like, I, I've done what I needed to do. I've, I've um, pushed the boundaries where I needed to push them. I, I got, I went through non-selection and forcing my, my nose back into selection. Like I've done all these things that have made me quite content. I thought my knee going was the time to leave but it wasn't because I couldn't carry on not knowing whether I could play netball again after a knee injury I was quite lucky to get out and get 15 years of netball without any big knee um you know knee injuries so this is another one of those things where someone asked me to play and I'm like oh I had a baby like four weeks ago it's like well do you want to I'm like <laughs> fine yes I, th I want to try and do it. So this is one of those things where I probably shouldn't, 
but I can't help myself. It's a challenge. And I need to see if I can do it needs. I, I can't even I can't even stress how much um, regret would haunt me more than failure. I think <laughs> like all my little netball movements are actually fine I've been jumping and like I haven't pissed myself yet. <laughs> actually I'm all good. But like it's just I don't have any evidence. Like honestly I that's what I'm scared of. Like I haven't gone up against somebody yeah. or tried to dodge and lose somebody like it takes a bit of energy if you haven't done it for a couple of years. Yes. <laughs> and so it's also going to be in, an, in another country um, from yeah. gym again. Um, so how how will you juggle that? Um, it'll be more juggling gym. I think it's going to be really hard for him to have us away. Um, when I say us, I don't include me. He's going to miss the children. <laughs> He's quite happy to see the back of me, but you know, I'm going to take the kids with me. So I do have my beautiful niece Paige coming from New Zealand to help me with the kids. Um, she travelled with me when I just had Bash in New Zealand um, to help me kind of get over to Italy. So she's coming back again to help me with two children so I can do this netball thing over in the UK. So she'll be a big help. Um, there was no way I could do it without her. Uh, there was no way we could ask Jim to give up what he was doing because he will be mid-season. Um, so we've had a lot of conversations about it. Some of those conversations get heated, but don't worry, I always win. And so we've spoken about whether this is a reality and um, I'm really grateful that Jim is also a professional athlete. He knows how crazy I am and how much I need to do this to see if I can do this. And it's completely doable, it's only a few months. Um, it's not that far, he can come see us like when he has like a couple of days off and stuff. So yeah, logistically, it should be fine. He can come over, but um, physically and emotionally, it's gonna be hard for me, but I'm kind of excited about that, the painful stuff a little bit, cause yeah, it's something for me. Like ultimately, this is something for me to do. Um, I've been a mum for like three years now, or pregnant for three years. And so this is the thing that I can take back. Like I can play, I'm allowed to do this. I'll be worried about the kids the whole time, but like this is this one's for me. So yeah, I'm excited. That's awesome. Um, and so have you started like training or anything yet? Or into a training program to try to get uh, match fit? back or yeah. match fitness yeah yeah but I just don't think I'll have the match fitness yet because Italy they don't know what netball is so because I'm like grossly tall I you know I often tell people I play basketball and then like I hope like hell they don't ask me to talk about it because I don't know anything about basketball so like basketball, I'm like, see, see, see. And I'm like, oh, cancel, don't talk to me anymore because I'm lying. You're going to like find me out. But I, so I can't find like where we are. There's no um, facility. Like I can just go to the gym or run on the road. So there's some netball movements. As you know, like to actually play a game of netball hurts different to just running. So that's going to be quite painful. I think when I get back on the court, so I'm trying to simulate it as much as I can and with the weather going on. So there's all these challenges that I just have to overcome just so I can make sure I tick this box before I die. So yeah, it is hard, um, but it's something to kind of like, there's a goal at the end and that's to be able to play a game of netball without dying. <laughs> Because, yeah, I think it's really important for women to be able to um, see you do this, like have kids and then um, still have the goal to get back on the court as well. Mm. And, yeah, um, I think it'll be inspirational for other women who might think, oh, I guess I'm, I'm retiring now that I'm having kids. I'm done, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Because growing up, you know, we didn't really see many mums come back from netball and I think on one hand that's a testament to the depth like if you have to take a year off to have a baby there's enough players to replace you so I guess you know I can see the other side of it of there being too many people to pick from 
But on the other hand, you know, I think it should be celebrated. I think that to be able to play at the top shouldn't just be for people who have to put their families on hold. It should be supported and encouraged. And if you can't come back, then at least you tried. But, you know, for too long, it's been don't have babies because you won't be able to come back. And I, I think that's, yeah, and, and that's not that's not being said, it's been implied. And I just, you know, in the last few years, we've seen so many mums come back to netball, especially at the top level, um, that it's really cool. And it's cool for our young ones to see, not that they should get pregnant early, but that they don't have to put off having families if that's what they want to succeed in first. So yeah, I hope so, it's cool. Yeah, so has the club that you're going to, have they been pretty supportive of you with the kids in that as well? Yeah, yeah, they, um, you know, they fully understand that my first priority is a mum and that I need the boys to be taken care of and comfortable. So um, I can give everything that I have to being the best for them. Um, so yeah, they, they've been amazing. The Seven Stars, the management and stuff have, have all made sure that we do have a place um, the boys have rooms, like everything set up for us and they're ready for us to just turn up and yeah, and start 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 the hard stuff. So yeah, they've been awesome. Ah, uh, that's cool. Um, so mm. do you still have any aspirations to get into playing at international level? Uh, no, nah. I think I think international is like is quite far beyond my reach at the moment. It's not something I can I mean, I'm finding it really hard to commit to to playing at the moment, to even training to be able to play. So, like, even if I was about eight years younger, um, I think at this stage now with two babies and so far away from, like, my family, it's just impossible to really commit to stuff. And I'm the kind of person that needs to give everything because that's what I expect from other people. If they were to be in my team, I would expect them to kind of give what they've got um, and I yeah it's hard enough as it is I mean going to the gym now at the moment like it, it's it's almost impossible some days well you know what you know how alone we are when I went into labor with Leo we had to ask our cleaner's daughter to watch Sebastian <laughs> because all our friends because it was off season so all of our um people that we knew that could have watched them had gone back to their home countries oh man and so i'm like trying to have this baby and i'm like is she all right he doesn't know her like you know like freaking out like the challenges we face over here just by not having like our families is incredible and i know this happens to so many like um, athletes that move their families for sport and stuff, you know, and it's it's really important to have a close knit group. Um, ours is just tiny, and they just so happen to all be away. So it's hard, man. Like I keep saying it, but I I just can't even stress how much of a challenge this is. <laughs> but we laugh, don't we, Nines? Otherwise, we're gonna lose it. <laughs> 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 yeah, because my cousin um, and her husband, they were up in Leeds while he was playing league. And um, yeah. I know she found it really hard, but they also had like, because he was like a Kiwi, um, like yes. a group of Kiwis up there. Yeah. But it's probably not the same like that um, with where Jimmy is in Italy, eh? Like no, as many there's... Kiwis? No, and like the other hard part is that none of the people that we kind of assert, like the foreigners group that speaks English, because we, I mean, we have a language barrier too, which is a different beast. E questo è dietro anche. Eh no, tranquillo, va bene. Ciao, buon giornata. Sì, no, 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 noi beviamo qua. Um, none of them have children, so like, my, you know, let's meet up for coffee, and everyone's like, yeah, okay, then, and I'm like, okay, what time? And is it cold? Are we going to be inside or outside? Like, because I got a baby, so like my problems are completely different. Oh man, I'm such a, I'm such a like grandma. I'm like, oh no, it's a bit cold. I can't come out today. <laughs> so it, yeah, it's completely different. So yeah, there are different challenges for us living overseas, um, especially when we're not the ones playing the sport. And so with you 
playing this season um, is, I mean, Jimmy's still playing as well. Um, is the goal for maybe Jimmy to become a pro babysitter and, and uh, switch to being a qualified, what would they call it, mag or something? Because <laughs> oh, oh, he's, he's had really... a pretty good run of it now. <laughs> oh man, amazing. You know, like, I was like super pregnant trying to sleep train our big boy so that Jim could sleep properly for training. <laughs> oh man, he's such a he's such a princess. I, I think he would like to. He would like to kind of just stay at home like with the kids, but I don't think I'd let him. Even now, like when I go to the gym and he has the baby, I'm like, text me, Kay, if you need anything. Yeah, it's a different beast. Like, you know what they're like. They just do one thing. I get pictures, too, of the baby sleeping gloriously while I'm at the gym. And I'm like, yeah, because we're up at 3 a.m. till, like, 6. He's tired. We're all tired. He's like, piece of cake. So, honestly, I wouldn't even let him stay at home with the kids because it would drive me nuts. Oh, thanks so much for joining us, Kat. And um, I'm really looking forward to seeing you back on the court again. It'll be so good. Yeah, thank you. It's exciting. Can't wait. Can't wait too. <laughs>